<laughs> so good afternoon uh, to everyone on this uh, Thursday afternoon time slot for uh, ELISA Action Webinar Series. Welcome to today's webinar with the title on the location and interoperability state of play, results of a Europe-wide maturity assessment. My name is Simon Vrecher and I'm an external consultant at European Commission's Joint Research Center and will be hosting today's uh, webinar. Uh, so maybe before we go to the, to the content, uh, let me share with you a few things about the ELISA, ELISA action as such, as you can see on the next slide. So ELISA stands for, for those who doesn't know, a European Location Interoperability Solutions for e-government. And it's one of the 50 actions that has been supported by the European Interoperability Program, ISA Square. Actually supports this digital transformation by making the best use of location data and technologies in an interoperable manner for citizens, businesses, and public administration. Uh, as you can see on the next slide, so there are four main, uh, let's say, objective uh, areas of ELISA. One is supporting different policy initiatives at European and national level. Uh, then providing reusable, interoperable cross-border and cross-sector frameworks and solutions for public administrations, businesses, and citizens. Uh, then uh, uh, discovering how emerging trends and technologies enable more effective use of location data for policy and digital public services. And last but not least, building a knowledge base uh, to inform and train stake stakeholders and to promote the adoption of good practices and innovations in uh, location data. Um, so as you can see on the previous slide, so there were several ELISA outputs uh, during, uh, through four different, let's say, uh, packages. Uh, I wouldn't uh, uh, list all of them, maybe just mention the spatial skills for digital government transformation, through which we are also trying to, let's say, uh, share with, with public the results of our work and also today's webinars is one of the one of those, uh, let's say. And um, at, um, so today's knowledge uh, will be shared by, the, by two speakers that you can see on the next slide. So one is uh, Massimo Pedroli, uh, senior consultant in public sector Deloitte. Uh, the another one uh, is uh, Ray Bogoslavsky, external consultant as well at European Commission's Joint Research Center. So what we will have on the table, uh, uh, so let's uh, check about the content. So uh, the webinar today is, uh, uh, let's say, uh, put into the six, uh, six uh, sections, six chapters. First five uh, with the content and last one with the questions and answer part. So at the beginning, um, Ray will in first and the second section uh, describe a bit, uh, uh, let's say the key uh, European Union location framework blueprint. So the framework that has been developed through ELISA and previous uh, ULF project. And uh, of course, the, the LIFO monitoring mechanisms and try to explain the relation between those of two. Uh, present also the LIFO analytical model. Then uh, Massimo will present the results of the LIFO wave 2020, as you will see and be uh, informed later on. There were two waves, one in 2019, another one in 2020, starting with 10 countries and then to extend to 23 countries. Uh, then uh, Massimo will share as well about a bit the LIFO resources and give some, let's say, uh, potential um, instructions and use cases how LIFO uh, can be used. At the end, as mentioned, there will be some space as well for questions and answer, uh, answers. And uh, as I said at the beginning, you are kindly welcome to put all your comments and questions during the, the webinar in the chat box. So at that point, I would uh, kindly invite uh, Ray to start with uh, section number one. Please, Ray, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Um, the uh, Location Interoperability Framework Observatory monitors the adoption of the recommended actions in the Uni European Union Location Framework uh, Blueprint or EULF uh, Blueprint. So uh, I'll focus a little bit on the Blueprint and, and its links with the, uh, with the LIFO. So the EULF blueprint, it's a guidance framework for the exchange and use of uh, location information in the context of uh, digital government. 
Uh, it focuses on interoperability, and in that respect, it uh, applies the interoperability principles and scope of the EIF. Uh, the guidance framework is, has 19 recommendations in five focus areas, and there are six role-based views of the guidance for policy management and technical roles. Uh, there are two um, related frameworks that are cross-referenced uh, in some detail in the guidance. Firstly, the EIF, and secondly, the uh, UNGGIM, Integrated Geospatial Information Framework. Uh, there are 49 best practices captured from LIFO and other sources uh, that, uh, uh, that highlight uh, the, the good practices in the different recommendations in the blueprint. And that number will be increased uh, over the next few weeks uh, to take account of the uh, LIFO 2020 results which will be published uh, shortly. Both the Blueprint and the LIFA are available online and uh, in document form, and uh, you'll see some of that uh, a little later. Next slide here covers the topics within the Blueprint, uh, which are also uh, paralleled by the indicators in the LIFO. So those are the five focus areas on policy and strategy, digital government integration, standardization and reuse, return on investment and governance partnerships and capabilities. So the framework uh, covers things like uh, the integration of uh, digital strategies and uh, location strategies, uh, the uh, application of uh, open data principles, uh, the use of location information in digital public services and the innovations it helps to create. Uh, the architectures and standards uh, that are applied, and the, um, the, the benefits that are delivered, how those are assessed and communicated, and how uh, external actors are supported with that information. And finally, on, on governance partnerships and, uh, and capabilities, you will see there that uh, the, uh, the blueprint uh, parallels the, uh, the different levels in the EIF. So legal interoperability, organizational interoperability, semantic and technical interoperability. Uh, but it also goes in, in more depth into some areas, uh, additional areas such as on benefits and, and skills. So move on to the next slide, please. So that introduces the, the blueprint. I'll now talk about the links with the, the LIFO and specifically the, the model that we use for assessment in the LIFO. Next slide, please. So uh, the LIFO analytical model starts with uh, a set of indicators uh, based on selected actions from, from the EULF blueprint uh, recommendations. Uh, those indicators, there are, there are 48 of, of them, are normalized uh, from um, the uh, original measures into a, a common range of naught to one. They're collected together uh, for each recommendation uh, in an average, so we get a recommendation index. The recommendations, uh, there are between three and five for each focus area, are collected together and averaged out at the focus area level, and the uh, at the top level, the LIFO index uh, is an average of the five focus area indexes. So you can see there we have a comprehensive framework covering all the topics that I mentioned previously. And it's a balanced scorecard approach so that no aspect of the framework is given any higher weighting than any other aspect of the framework. And I'll move on to the next slide, please. So the model itself. Uh, the assessment model um, is, uh, uh, is in the form of uh, primary indicators and secondary indicators. The primary indicators are collected, the information for those is collected through a, uh, a questionnaire uh, that is uh, filled out by the, the LIFO contact points in the different member states. Secondary indicators are taken from external sources and reused. So for example, in terms of secondary indicators, 
uh, we include uh, some of the um, uh, Inspire monitoring information in the form of composite indicators that are, uh, are uh, used by the, the LIFO. So the data sets and means of access under the Inspire directive are uh, second, important secondary indicators for LIFO. Uh, we also uh, draw in information from the European data portal in terms of the policies for reuse of public sector information by the private sector. In terms of primary indicators, uh, we focus on data sets and means of access relating to the Open Data Directive. And uh, we also cover topics such as GDPR readiness, the use of standards, and the, the use of uh, Inspire data sets and uh, the SDI generally for digital public services. And those primary indicators are captured through uh, closed questions uh, in the questionnaire that is uh, filled out by, uh, uh, by contact points. And uh, in addition to those questions, we seek evidence to support the questions and use to uh, enrich the outputs that we produce within the LIFO. So I'll close at that point and I'll hand over to Massimo, who will uh, tell you about the results of uh, the LIFO 2020 data collection. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ray. And uh, I'll start uh, by showing the um, coverage of uh, LIFO, uh, which has uh, significantly increased from the first run in 2019, as you can see here, passing from uh, 10 countries to 23 countries, um, which provides a comprehensive and diversified view of the uh, European state of play. Um, we thank uh, all contributors that have followed up the process of building up the uh, uh, LEAF Observatory and uh, have provided the information uh, during both uh, runs. Um, the process has been uh, uh, very um, helpful to connect with uh, the network of representatives in uh, all uh, considered countries and uh, have built uh, a, a stronger community of uh, um, stakeholders in the geospatial arena. Um, let's start with the key messages from uh, the um, uh, LIFO 2020 data collection. The combined leaf index uh, for the 23 countries is 55, which confirms an average good level of maturity for the participants. Uh, the policy and strategy alignment for this area has the highest score of um, uh, 63 uh, on a scale from zero to one. All uh, indexes and indicators are measured on such a scale, followed by uh, uh, return on investment uh, with uh, 0 0.58, uh, digital government integration with 0 0.57, uh, and standardization and reuse uh, with 0 0.55. The governance uh, uh, partnerships and capabilities focus area is the weakest, standing apart with the lowest score at uh, 0 0.45. Uh, well, when looking at uh, scores uh, by country on the bar chart and on the map, you can see that there's a, a group of four outliers, uh, Czech Republic, Belgium, Norway and Denmark, uh, that have reported excellent scores in all focus areas. And there are also five more countries, Poland, Switzerland, the Netherlands, Spain, France and Sweden, that are positioned above the average. The remaining countries have more or less a significant room, uh, room for improvement, uh, but the uh, um, scale, the range of scores, as you can see, is quite distributed uh, uh, on a continuous scale. Um, even with uh, uh, the diverse levels of maturity across all focus areas, and in each of them separately, all countries have offered some examples of best practices in one 
or more of those focus areas and that obviously their own strengths and weaknesses. Um, the um, looking at the progress and the changes between the two years, um, we can see that uh, we have different averages calculated for the um, full group of 23 participants and for the subset of countries who have participated in both years. So to ensure comparability, full comparability of results. Uh, looking at the subset of 10 countries, uh, the EU average uh, LIFO index has increased from 0 0.54 to 0 0.60. Uh, this increase can be attributed to the positive variations in uh, almost in all focus areas, but particularly on policy and strategy alignment that has increased by uh, 0 0.11. Uh, with uh, contributions uh, uh, under recommendation three, where organizations are now reported uh, being fully prepared for the GDPR under location uh, data privacy perspective in more than half of the countries and uh, under recommendation five, where um, public procurements now specific of uh, location services and data now specifically refer to the INSPIRE directive other relevant standards. Uh, under the standardization of re and reuse focus area, the increase has also been significant by 0 0.08. Significant progress has been reported in the compliance of data sets and network services to the relevant INSPIRE implementing regulations. This is one of the indicators we reuse from uh, the INSPIRE monitoring. And to the, the good scores uh, that uh, uh, the new indicators uh, on the use of metadata to facilitate the joint discovery of spatial and non-spatial metadata have reported. Uh, finally, under governance, partnerships and capabilities, the um, increase has been by 0 0.06, uh, with uh, more frequent resort to pu public-private partnerships uh, being reported, and uh, with the adoption of a more structured approach to training and awareness raise. Let's now go uh, through the detailed results by focus area. Uh, policy and strategy alignment is the focus area with the highest average maturity. Uh, 0 0.61, as indicated in the bar chart, which reflects the relevance uh, given to the definition of appropriate strategies and uh, uh, policies as a fundamental enabler of location interoperability. The level of alignment between location and digital government strategies um, is generally good. Uh, several countries, however, do not have a specific location strategy. The practice of opening core location data sets, making them available for free, is frequent, but not universal. Uh, actually, it concerns more than half of the participating countries. In general, uh, at least attribution of data sources is required. Um, uh, most controllers and processors of public sector location data are fully GDPR prepared. Uh, again, under the specific perspective of location data privacy. Um, Location-based evidence and analysis is quite often used uh, in, uh, to help uh, in developing uh, relevant policies and monitoring their outcomes. And finally, uh, general references are made to relevant standards in public procurement of location data and related services. However, uh, there is a room for improvement uh, uh, in this dimension uh, uh, due to the fact that uh, uh, those uh, procurements only very rarely refer to a standard-based uh, architecture. The um, overall increase in the score of this focus area between uh, uh, 2019 and 2020 is strongly related to the positive performance 
under recommendation three concerning the compliance uh, with data protection principles when dealing with location data and under recommendation five on the standardization of procurement processes. Um, most uh, organizations, as I said, are now uh, uh, reported being fully prepared in almost for the GDPR under uh, location data privacy perspective in almost four countries, in particular, um, as you can see in the bar chart, Belgium, France and Portugal have reported the, the strongest process in progress in um, location uh, data protection. The additional 20, 20 participating countries are also aligned with the high average level of preparedness uh, with the 2019 participating countries which are reported in the bar chart. Um, with the only exception of the countries that uh, uh, do not belong to the European Union and therefore apply the GDPR uh, only for specific aspects uh, um, such as uh, Switzerland, for example. Um, the 10 countries participating in both years uh, now uh, reference both a specific uh, provision of the INSPIRE directive or relevant standards. Uh, in the specific case of Belgium and the Czech Republic, uh, they make reference to a standards-based architecture describing where and how the uh, requested components fit. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is an exception overall in uh, the uh, um, uh, overall sample where uh, standard-based architecture is not usually referred in public procurements. The additional 2020 uh, participating countries, on the other hand, has, have shown a less consistent approach to the use of standards in procurements of location data and services. Um, under recommendation for uh, location-based evidence and analysis is now used to help uh, in developing relevant policies and monitoring outcomes in most relevant uh, policy topics in uh, certain, the majority of countries, which was not the case in 2019. Uh, the performance uh, under recommendation one uh, uh, has improved with a significant degree of alignment reached between location information strategies and uh, uh, e-government strategies in the majority of countries. And finally, no change uh, is to report with regard to recommendation two. Let's go now to uh, the digital government integration focus area where the current state uh, shows that the majority of participating countries report extensive reuse of location data and solutions in digital public services, but not yet fully exploiting its potential for modernization and simplification of such services. The public sector SDI is used by the private sector and other organizations uh, for the delivery of innovative applications and services, but the practice is applied to a significant extent only on, in a minority of countries. Um, the national SDI is used to a good extent in delivering digital public services across government, often in combination with sector-specific SDRs. Uh, an Inspire-based um, SDI is typically used for cross-border services, but only rarely for cross-sector public services within each country. Um, concerning uh, um, collaborative uh, approaches, an open and collaborative methodology uh, is not used extensively for the design and improvement of location-enabled uh, digital public services. services. However, uh, a more collaborative approach is adopted for the delivery of services with quite an active involvement of the private sector as well. Um, finally, open and collaborative methodologies. Um, uh, finally, the integration of uh, location and statistical information is not yet mature in producing location-based statistics. Um, passing to the comparison of the results between the two years, um, while the average of the 10 countries that have participated in 2019 and 2020 has seen only a slight increase, uh, there have been some significant positive uh, for Belgium, France and Portugal and negative for Norway, Slovenia and Slovakia deviations. Um, uh, 
this must take into account that several uh, uh, indicators in this focus area have uh, been recalibrated. The average score of uh, all uh, 23 uh, countries is aligned with the average of the 10 uh, countries participating in both years. Um, looking at the uh, different recommendations, uh, there has been a marginal improvement under recommendation nine uh, with a slight extension of the range of actions undertaken uh, to fully exploit the integration of location and statistical information. Uh, which, however, remains an area for improvement, as we see, uh, as we said before, um, a marginal improvement also concerning uh, uh, recommendation six, uh, um, which is partly linked to the change in the questions and uh, recalibration of the indicators related to the simplification and modernization of digital government uh, services and processes. Um, there has been a decrease of the score related uh, to recommendation uh, eight uh, uh, concerning the adoption of uh, open and collaborative uh, methodologies. Uh, this is due to the change of the indicator uh, under this focus area, which now better reflects the actual state of play. And no specific uh, relevant change has to be reported uh, concerning uh, recommendation uh, seven. Let's now go to the standardization and reuse focus area. Um, the participating uh, countries have made significant efforts towards the standardization of spatial data modeling, sharing and exchange. This is now a point of strength of location interoperability practices in Europe. Um, most of the participating countries promote the reuse of existing authentic data, uh, data services and relevant uh, technical solutions. And most countries uh, adopt a common location architecture approach fitting uh, within a broader national ICT uh, architecture framework. Um, conversely, uh, on the uh, lower uh, part uh, of the scale, uh, uh, with some exceptions, most countries uh, adopt only a limited range of initiatives to manage and improve location data quality. Uh, as for the other recommendations, um, uh, uh, an ad hoc approach is mostly adopted uh, to for monitoring new technological developments in the geospatial domain under recommendation 10. Um, reuse practices of uh, existing authentic data, um, data services and uh, technical solutions are adopted in more than half of the countries. And there are several registries of location information implemented, uh, which are uh, the backbone of uh, uh, data reuse. Uh, in uh, the uh, sample of participating countries. Uh, several geospatial domain standards have been adopted in almost all countries, and there is a high level of alignment of uh, uh, spatial data modeling and sharing with European standards in the majority of countries. Concerning the um, uh, variations between the two years, um, progress has been reported uh, for the subset of participating countries, uh, uh, countries participating in both years, uh, in uh, for almost all of them, particularly in, in the Czech Republic, uh, um, Denmark, and Norway. Um, there has been a, a good uh, a performance of the new uh, participating countries, the additional 13 countries participating in 2020 as well, uh, which I have uh, raised uh, the average of the full set of 23 countries uh, to uh, uh, 0.55 compared uh, to uh, 0 0.54 uh, in the previous year. Um, there, has, there has been a positive trend related to recommendation 12, um, with higher conformity of spatial data sets and uh, network services with the Inspire implementing regulations, uh, as we mentioned before. 
and positive results uh, have been reported also on two additional indicators on the use of metadata to facilitate the discoverability of uh, spatial data jointly with uh, non-spatial data. Uh, the European average uh, is reported being stable uh, concerning recommendation uh, 10 and recommend, uh, recommendation 13 on data quality, as we mentioned before, uh, which is uh, still the weak um, uh, practice under this uh, um, focus area. And the slightly lower score uh, has been reported related to recommendation 11 due to the recalibration of an indicator uh, on the establishment of location information registers. Again, uh, the uh, um, uh, new indicators uh, uh, better represent the current state of play. Under return on investment, um, the uh, focus area uh, uh, presents the second highest maturity, uh, the second highest score at uh, 0 0.61, as shown in the bar chart. And more in detail, the results in this focus area indicate that almost all countries uh, have adopted a good array of measures uh, to make the process of searching, um, uh, finding and accessing location data and services uh, as easy as possible for uh, um, uh, public administrations and non-governmental parties alike. Uh, this is actually one of the enablers uh, improving the sharing and reuse of location data to help build the data economy. Uh, more than half of the countries uh, are developing or have implemented a, a systematic approach to the communication uh, of the availability and benefits of location data and location enabled uh, digital public services to raise awareness and understanding on uh, such topics. More than half uh, of the countries apply a strategic approach to funding public sector uh, location uh, reference data to make uh, their access cost effective. Many countries have implemented or planned an array of actions to actively support private, nonprofit, and academic players in the development of new products and new services. Um, finally, uh, on the negative side, there is a scarce consistency uh, in the approach to the performance and benefits monitoring of location info information. Uh, there, are, there are, however, a few exceptions with good practices, at least applied in specific studies uh, related to this domain. Um, concerning the uh, variations between the two years, uh, um, uh, there has been an increase uh, of the index uh, for the subset of the 10 countries participating in both years, especially Austria, Portugal, and Slovenia, um, thanks uh, to a ma more mature approach to monitoring uh, of location information benefits. Looking at the specific recommendations, uh, uh, more extensive uh, um, uh, methods and scope of performance monitoring, as we said before, uh, has been uh, reported uh, with also an extended array of actions for impact-based improvements in location-enabled processes. Um, this, however, has not raised the uh, recommendation index significantly. Therefore, uh, this uh, domain, uh, performance monitoring and uh, impact monitoring, remains the lowest in this focus area. Um, and the additional participating countries have not contributed either to raising the average for the whole group. Under recommendation uh, 15, uh, there's a slight increase reported uh, for the um, 10 countries participating in both years, thanks to a more mature communication approaches adopted, uh, particularly uh, by Austria, Portugal and Slovenia. Uh, this progress, um, however, in the average, uh, has been offset by new participating countries, which adopted uh, uh, reportedly a less mature approach in this domain. Uh, under recommendation 16, uh, there has been a slight increase reported uh, due to additional measures 
implemented to uh, make the process of searching uh, for and accessing location data uh, easier for uh, stakeholders. Uh, uh, this approach has been implemented in more than half of the countries. Also, in this case, uh, the new uh, comers in the uh, sample of participating countries have reported a slightly uh, lower average uh, maturity. Finally, the governance partnerships and capabilities uh, focus area is the one, as we said, with the lowest maturity. Um, this reflects uh, some weaknesses, particularly concerning the establishment of partnerships uh, and uh, the unstructured approach uh, uh, to raise awareness and develop uh, geospatial skills. Again, these uh, concerns the average of the participating countries but there are exceptions some of them will be reported uh, in the good practices we have mentioned before uh, later uh, the average therefore is uh, uh, at 0 0.45 as we mentioned before looking more in details uh, at the results uh, under the various recommendations uh, uh, good um, processes there have been uh, uh, reported uh, um, to establish uh, and reinforce the governance of location information in the context of digital governance. governance. However, um, such governance in general uh, does not effectively involve all relevant stakeholders at all level of government. Um, Cross-government agreements uh, between public authorities uh, within each country for financing building and operating location data services or digital public services using location data um, are quite frequent. Uh, such agreements, uh, on the contrary, are much less frequent in cross-border contexts and public-private partnerships are also uh, scarce. Um, while uh, in uh, several countries, the range of initiatives uh, taken to uh, build awareness and skills on geospatial matters is uh, relatively extensive, um, a few countries are positioned significantly below the average. An important factor is that in most uh, countries, there is no strategic approach to building the skills necessary to drive improvements uh, in the use of location information uh, in digital public services and to support growth opportunities. Um, comparing the results between the two years, uh, um, while the uh, index for this focus area is still the lowest of all five, as we said before, there has been some progress uh, between uh, 2019 and 2020, specifically in the subset of 10 participating countries in both years uh, uh, that have raised the their average from uh, 0 0.45 to 0 0.50 as you can see in the bar chart the newcomers uh, the additional countries participating uh, in 2020 for the first time have also brought some uh, uh better practices than those uh, reported in average uh, last year in 2019 uh, which has raised also the uh, average for the 23 countries uh, overall uh, to 0 0.50 uh, 45. Uh, in detail uh, um, there have been uh, um, some uh, progress uh, uh, reported both uh, in terms of adoption of a more extensive approach to training and awareness raising and uh, in the more frequent resort, although still limited, as we mentioned before, to public-private partnerships. Uh, under recommendation 17 specifically, there has been a, a lower score. This is due to the recalibration uh, of the indicator on the joint governance of the organizations in charge of the SDI and uh, of e-government, which now presents a more, uh, more uh, uh, accurate state of play. As we said uh, uh, at the beginning, um, good practices have been reported uh, uh, by all countries. Uh, we have a wide sample actually of uh, good practices that will enrich also the set of uh, practices presented uh, for the ULF blueprint as Ray mentioned at the beginning. So here we only have um, uh, 
selection uh, that intends to uh, provide a representative sample showing that uh, there are uh, good practices for all um, uh, focus areas. In the policy and uh, strategy alignment focus areas, for example, there's uh, Interpremi, a uh, Bel Belgian uh, platform uh, built up to support uh, the compensation policies for uh, those businesses that suffer from less traffic due to roadworks. And the solution also uses continuously updating the information from different sources and triggers an automated procedure for allocating compensation. And uh, in the same focus area, RUIN, uh, the check register of uh, territorial um, identification, uh, addresses and real estate, which is really the key tool underpinning and implementing the open and, date and reference data policies of the country through all domains. In the digital um, uh, government integration uh, focus area, uh, we display here PEL, which is uh, um, uh, an initiative of the uh, Agency uh, for um, Energy Efficiency in Italy uh, that offers a platform to evaluate the performance of public lightning infrastructures and uh, also um, support the modernization of the uh, public lightning infrastructures. Uh, by monitoring its efficiency uh, on an ongoing basis. And in the future, uh, we'll also offer the possibility to exploit it uh, to, uh, for uh, uh, added value services, for example, for the installation of additional um, uh, Wi-Fi hotspots, uh, cameras, and so on. Um, Oscar, Oscar is a Finnish solution um, reported uh, um, in uh, uh, as a framework uh, for uh, easily building multi-purpose web mapping applications based on distributed SCI uh, such as Inspire. Um, it's uh, an easy to use uh, solution offering a wizard for creating uh, embedded uh, maps uh, and it's ready to connect to inspire, inspire data services or, or other data sources um, it's uh, uh, widely reused uh, and this is why uh, this practice is uh, reported specifically in the standardization and uh, reuse focus area, uh, not only in Finland by different public administrations, but also in uh, several countries abroad in Europe on, and also outside of Europe. Um, in the uh, return on investment focus area, as we said before, um, the approach to monitoring uh, um, uh, performance, impacts and benefits uh, of location-based uh, uh, services and of location data uh, is not mature yet, but there are some studies, interesting studies to report. Um, the study on the value of uh, uh, addresses web API um, uh, performed in uh, Denmark is one of those studies um, that uh, has shown that uh, uh, the efficiency gains um, that can be obtained uh, by the use of um, uh, DAWAS access data it can amount up to 950 million uh, um, uh, Danish crowns uh, uh, per year. Uh, the study uses a uh, uh, well-developed uh, 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 assessment model using uh, literature cases, uh, uh, actual data on the use of data of the DEWA and savings in a sample of organizations and also relies on uh, sensitivity assessment uh, to evaluate the trustworthiness of the approach adopted. Finally, in the um, governance partnerships and capabilities uh, uh, focus area, we present here uh, Norway Digital, which uh, is a collaboration framework between organizations and bodies uh, uh, that are responsible for providing location information and uh, major users of uh, such information. It's an interesting framework because it uh, uh, provides a consistent approach to collaboration uh, that can be exploited uh, uh, by all uh, uh, organizations uh, interested uh, in uh, using uh, 
location information and uh, um, also uh, is regulated by common technical and administrative obligations based on the uh, Norwegian Geodata Act and uh, uh, common agreed uh, requirements. So this is an interesting practices for those who uh, intend to uh, assess how to um, establish a common framework for uh, partnerships uh, in using location data and location-based uh, services. Let's now pass to uh, LIFO resources. Um, uh, the LIFO resources are uh, uh, all available in one place, uh, which is the LIFO solution on JoinUp. JoinUp is the uh, uh, European uh, Commission uh, collaborative uh, uh, platform for uh, usable solutions and uh, interoperability in general. Uh, LIFO uh, is a solution uh, which is part of the ELISA collection, ELISA being the action under which uh, LIFO has been uh, developed. And the LIFO solution, as you can see uh, on the screenshot, uh, um, displays all resources uh, which are uh, the country fact sheets, both for 2019 and 2020, the European state of play for both years, the interactive dashboards and the analytical models, a model uh, underpinning the um, observatory and the case studies all from one page, as you can see here. Uh, all of those uh, resources are ready for consultation and reuse. Let's have a look at them. Um, first of all, uh, uh, seeing how they relate uh, among uh, each other, uh, the country fact sheets and the, the European state of play contain the data collected uh, through the interactive uh, um, data collection process uh, the, uh, we have held with the contributors and uh, present them uh, in a comprehensive uh, and uh, explicative way. The data coming from the fact sheets and the state of play, uh, uh, the data underpinning data collection, are then uh, presented in uh, um, uh, interactive dashboards. Uh, those interactive dashboards uh, have, in their turn, in uh, each uh, um, dashboard, uh, the link uh, with the relevant parts of the ULF blueprint. Uh, the country fact sheets uh, have been developed for all the 23 participating countries, one for each. Uh, there are already 10 fact sheets published for the uh, countries that participated in 2010 and uh, 19. Uh, each um, fact sheet uh, presents uh, a quite uh, a visual uh, content, as you can see. Uh, from the slide. There's an overall summary with the LIFO index score, the scores for each focus area, and a table uh, summarizing the main strengths and weaknesses uh, for each country. Then uh, there's a detailed analysis per focus area, uh, recommendation and indicators uh, with reference to the uh, um, ULF recommendations. Um, for each focus area, there are comparisons between the results uh, uh, in 2019 and 2020 for the countries participating in both years. And finally, for all countries, as we said before, uh, there are best practices reported uh, in, in uh, all fact sheets and uh, related to different uh, policy domains and uh, different recommendations. Uh, the European State of Play provides a uh, comprehensive view of the uh, maturity of uh, the state of, um, of the location interoperability. Uh, you will see there in a more extensive way the information that we presented before. Um, uh, there's an overall summary with the LIFO index score and the scores for each focus area and the main Europe-wide strengths and weaknesses, the table you can see. Uh, in the slide, uh, then there's a detailed analysis per focus area again, uh, and 2019 comparisons between 2019 and 2020. The best practices in this case are um, presented in callouts in uh, the body of the text for easier referencing. And, uh, the uh, 
uh, best practices presented there are a selection of the best practices uh, proposed by all participating countries. Uh, the LIFO interactive dashboards uh, uh, is a set of interactive tools um, that enable users to navigate through a series of charts, displaying the level of implementation of the ULF blueprint in participating countries. Um, users can interact with the dashboards, identifying, uh, uh, selecting data as they need, uh, uh, and uh, identifying strengths and areas of improvement in their countries, uh, in their own countries and in other countries, comparing the status of different countries um, according to a selection of uh, countries that uh, they uh, are interested in. And, and uh, from there, as I said, uh, users can uh, find out more about the related ULF uh, guidance. The dashboards are uh, available already for the 2019 data at the link uh, provided here. You will uh, be able to retrieve the link uh, from the materials uh, of the presentation that will be published soon. And the 20, uh, 20 data will be also available soon. I will have a quick uh, navigation on the uh, um, dashboards in a while. Uh, the dashboards uh, uh, are a concern. First of all, the LIFO index. There's one dashboard displaying the uh, evolution of the LIFO index over time and the map, a heat map. Um, then there are two um, dashboards for focus area indexes, both, uh, both display and displaying respectively the results in a single year and the comparison between uh, the uh, different tiers, the two years. Same goes uh, for the recommendation indexes, results on one year and uh, evolution of the results between the two years. Um, as for the uh, indicators, there are two separate um, dashboards, uh, one with indicators uh, for 2019 and one for the indicators for 2020, because as we said before, uh, there have been some uh, um, uh, recalibrations of some indicators. Uh, so this is why they cannot be directly compared. Um, let's now have a quick walkthrough. Uh, I will then invite you to uh, navigate yourself in the dashboards. Uh, the uh, uh, entry point to the dashboard uh, present uh, this way. Uh, you can navigate from here to the various uh, dashboards, starting with the LIFO index. So here you can, uh, for example, select uh, uh, different countries. The selection, uh, as you can see, uh, updates dynamically both the heat map and uh, the uh, bar chart. You can select all countries together. As you can see, there's a group of countries uh, that uh, reports results only for one year uh, and uh, the 10 countries reporting results for both years. Then looking at focus areas, uh, there's uh, the dashboard allowing to uh, navigate through the results uh, of the indicators by focus area. Uh, here you can again select the countries you are interested in. The selection is displayed uh, uh, also in uh, this uh, box to make it clearer. Also uh in the heat map and you can also select the year you're interested in as we said before and the focus area you are interested in this uh impacts on the heat map whereas the um uh, radar chart uh, still displays all of the focus areas uh, for better comparison. So as you can see, the 
heat map colors uh, change depending on the focus areas you select. From here, you can navigate to the dashboard uh, presenting the changes over time. And here again, you can select the um, country you want to look at specifically. You can show one year or both years for comparison. Both years are pre-selected due to the nature of this slide, of this dashboard. Uh, a similar structure uh, is available for the recommendations. Again, all recommendations presented here, possibility to select all countries, a subset of them as you would like. The um, selection by country applies to both the radar chart and the heat map. And uh, similarly to what we have seen in the um, focus area dashboard, you can select the different uh, recommendations. This impacts on the heat map, as you can see the color uh, saturation changes based on the different positioning of the selected countries uh, for the various uh, recommendations. And uh, again, uh, similar to what we have seen before, there's a, a dashboard with the changes over time, which uh, works the same way as uh, the dashboard uh, comparing results between the two years by focus area, selecting, allow, allowing, uh, enabling uh, the selection of the country you want to look at and the years you want to look at. Uh, this selection is a preparation for the possible extension of the um, observatory to future years as well. Finally, the uh, dashboards with indicators displays the indicators uh, for each focus area. Uh, if you want to understand what indicator concerns uh, uh, is presented in a specific um, by a specific um, information here, uh, you can uh, click on indicators and this will lead you to uh, the uh, resource in uh, the um, uh, leaf solution where uh, all the indicators are presented so that you can understand what each indicator means. Uh, all um, uh, resources, again, all uh, dashboards uh, report to the um, different uh, guidances, uh, pertinent guidances in uh, the uh, uh, ULF blueprint. Let's now uh, pass to the final parts of the presentation. Um, we have conducted uh, uh, also five, um, four case studies uh, with uh, four countries that have contributed to, to analyzing the possible use and impact of the uh, uh, LIFO, Czech Republic, Italy, Norway, and Slovenia. Uh, LIFO use has been assessed uh, under four dimensions. The added value of LIFO process for location interoperability, um, the um, uh, uh, use of uh, online tools, the outreach that uh, um, LIFO offers, and the possible use of uh, uh, LIFO results, as you can see here. Um, all the dimensions have uh, uh, offered uh, opportunities for uh, uh, 
thoughts about how to use uh, the results of LIFA and how to improve the tool in the future if necessary. Um, I invite you to have a look at the uh, case studies that are also published on the uh, uh, solution, LIFO solution in join up. Talking about uh, the use of uh, uh, LIFO, I'll quickly um, present a um, uh, sort of uh, user journey to show how users can approach the different uh, LIFO resources and the ULF blueprint together with LIFO. Um, the role-based views of the ULF blueprint uh, that uh, uh, Ray mentioned, uh, the beginning can be leveraged to better exploit LIFO resources. Uh, so for example, uh, users can uh, build up their own user journey to exploit LIFO resources to get together with the LIFO blueprint according to their own needs. Um, we'll make an example here with um, uh, uh, an example of a policymaker, Lucy, in this case, who wants to uh, explore which actions to take to improve location making, uh, policy making through better use of location information. It's a user journey passing from the identification of opportunities for improvement. This can be done by looking at the country results on the fact sheets and the dashboards and identify where the areas for improvement are in the different uh, focus areas, recommendations and indicators, and possibly focus uh, their, uh, the attention of those improvement actions on those uh, uh, domains. Then pass to uh, uh, looking for applicable best practices from other countries in the country fact sheets, the European state of play and the ULF blueprint that can be reused to improve the uh, performance uh, on, in, the, uh, in the domain of interest. Uh, practice, best practices can be searched uh, well, both in the country fact sheets and the European state of play and the ULF blueprint, as they are all referenced to specific uh, uh, focus areas and recommendations. Um, a further step is to use the LIFO model uh, to um, carry out self-assessment uh, assessments if uh, uh, necessary at a specific level, organization, uh, uh, location, policy area, and uh, plan imp um, improvement actions. Uh, this is a, a future uh, user uh, LIFO capability in particular. Uh, specific actions, however, to implement for uh, improvements are already reported in the how section of uh, the um, in the ULF blueprint for each focus area. So you can see here, for example, some uh, um, recommended actions to achieve uh, the uh, highest uh, level of uh, uh, maturity in uh, the uh, policy uh, and uh, strategy alignment focus area. Um, it's uh, finally also possible to use uh, uh, the LIFO resources to make interim and final measurements of progress by using the LIFO analytical model and or the dashboards for self-assessment. This is partially a, um, a possible future development. However, the um, LIFO model is currently available as an annex to the European State of Play report. It's an Excel file that can be reused already now in, uh, for uh, self-assessment. So this is an example of how to uh, use all uh, um, resources of LIFO and the uh, ULF blueprint jointly. Um, it's very concrete, so it's not uh, only a centralized process, um, but it's a process and a set of tools that can be used uh, by all uh, relevant stakeholders interested in discovering uh, the power of uh, uh, location information. Um, and uh, we also suggest uh, to exploit the um, feature offered by JoinUp 
to share outcomes of the process, discuss approaches and ask for advice from the ELISE community in join up by opening a discussion under the ELISE um, collection. Uh, so this is a, a feature that uh, is very helpful to um, get out the most of collaboration uh, from the community having participated uh, not only in LIFO, but having contributed to ELISE uh, throughout all of these years. Thank you very much. Uh, we have been going as slightly beyond the schedule, but uh, I would uh, now give the floor to Simon and to possible questions and answers. I see that uh, there have been some comments popping up and questions possibly in the chat. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Massimo and Ray. So I think we are a bit behind the schedule, but uh, I think uh, uh, you gave quite a comprehensive explanation of LIFO, its uh, relationship to uh, 2LF Blueprint, how to use it, uh, what were the results of the participating countries and so on. Um, nevertheless, uh, there are still, uh, I think, quite a lot of participants here. There were some comments. I can see also here there are uh, quite many participants that uh, took place uh, in both of the data collections in 2019 and 2020. Maybe we can, for the beginning, uh, invite them for some few comments. So, for example, I see here Tomasz Petek from Slovenia, Martin Tuchina from, from uh, Slovakia, Eva is also here. So, uh, maybe before addressing some comments that have been in the chat box, can I encourage some of the participants to start. Tomasz, maybe, can I encourage you? Uh, hello, Simon, do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well. So maybe just uh, uh, some, uh, some overall comments about the, let's say, uh, uh, overall location to probability state of play and does it reflects your expectation. And maybe since you've been involved in both, uh, let's say data collection waves in 2019 and 2020, uh, how do you, let's say, comment uh, uh, actual uh, location interoperability transformation process in your country? So maybe maybe some comments and then also the usefulness of the LIFO and Blueprint as such. So please, Tomasz. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to make a reflection. Uh, I always say that uh, it's very important to have an opportunity to compare uh, in some equal uh, level the activities which are uh, we running in uh, particular countries uh, in the way of um, interconnecting uh, a geospatial world with the uh, so-called e-government world and uh, presented uh, results from the dashboard and from the uh, uh, LIFO framework and also the blueprint as a basis are uh, good uh, tools and good uh, let's say example how we could be uh, confirmed that we are following or not following in the, the way which uh, is written in some strategic recommendations and orientation documents. Uh, if I comment uh, the presented situation, I, uh, my feeling is that uh, it's uh, made a significant progress forward, but still we need to do a lot in the way of uh, awareness raising and the capacity building. And from those reasons, this uh, presented approach uh, is quite uh, useful, at least for the situation here in, uh, in Slovenia. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, I would be quite uh, uh, grateful if this, uh, let's say, mechanism or framework uh, would be as much as possible uh, so-called automatized without any needs for intervention because sometimes I get feeling that uh, uh, scores are uh, depends on maybe enthusiasm of uh, participants from particular countries and uh, but uh, this is just uh, my personal opinion. Uh, nevertheless, uh, in, uh, in the situation of Slovenia, I could uh, confirm that we following quite uh, 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 quite well this um, let's say guiding documents and also blueprint uh, orientation activities and they help us to clarify some of uh, problems in communication and coordination and uh, between sectors between uh, 
different uh, data holders, data providers, and specific uh, uh, data and service users. And uh, I take this as an uh, ongoing process, which is uh, sometimes taking too long, uh, but at least, at least for us who are participants in already in beginning in this process, but uh, nevertheless, uh, immediately when you have many stakeholders, you need to be patient and uh, take care about uh, each of them to, to, to put on the level which we want to, to reach uh, in the final uh, level of interoperability, uh, semantic and all other interoperability levels uh, for geospatial information and for e-government uh, services. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tomas, for sharing your views with us. Uh, maybe can I ask uh, the same, uh, I think Martin is here as well, Martin Tuchina from Slovakia. Martin, are you with us? Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Okay. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, briefly, thanks a lot really for a very nice uh, summary and wrap up of a huge amount of the work uh, done uh, for the last uh, relatively long period. Uh, what I would really appreciate was also the way how you managed to, to provide these vis visualizations, especially via these uh, Power BI projects. And uh, it helps a lot also to see uh, the figures in a more understandable and easy shareable way. And what I would really, I don't want to comment the specific country uh, situation. I'm sure each country has their own strengths and challenges. But what I would really like to somehow highlight maybe towards the future uh, would be two topics. First one is capacity really to make sure that uh, somehow everybody or let's say each country which will consider this kind of uh, uh, project outcomes as useful will bear in mind because uh, uh, you still need to have someone, at least one person, ideally group of or team of people in the country, uh, really uh, trying to understand the indicators and collect the data and provide the, the input. And then to the second keyword would be the sustainability, yeah, to, to find a way how to uh, continue, because this, this was really uh, impressive start. Uh, it's also important to sustain um, persistence that indicators will not change significantly in time. Of course, automatization will be more than welcome, but there are topics which will be very difficult to turn from, let's say, human uh, subjectability to very objective figures. But uh, yeah, I think uh, you you based uh, uh, very solid um, base tone, and now it's the question what what will be possible to do towards the future and to keep it alive. Yeah, thanks a lot. You're muted, Simon, I think. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, so I was just explaining that during the course of the presentation, there were already questions from one country to another that uh, took place in the in the process. So I think Antti from Finland uh, posed a question about the success of the Czechia. So maybe, Eva, if uh, you are still with us, I see you raised your hand as well, uh, maybe to, to shortly answer to that as well to, to Antti. So what was your, let's say, uh, success story? And of your indicators. Eva, please. Yes, so good afternoon. Uh, uh, greetings from Prague, where we have a sunny winter at the moment. And um, uh, yes, I, the LIFO story was interesting. It was challenging and uh, yeah, as the communication was not easy during these years, it never was clear what's uh, the result. So we were not applying to win, but we were trying to describe the situation uh, in the country. And in fact, it was uh, the LIFO became a very 
yeah, interesting reflection to along their story of the country. Uh, I was presenting it uh, at the, uh, I think, December or late November um, webinar of the Elise. And uh, I tried to explain that uh, in the 90s, there were huge changes, in fact, everywhere related to the administrative part, the economic part, the, the sub public society. And naturally, this then uh, impacted also the quality of uh, location data, or in fact, they showed the number of inconsistencies and too many changes in a short time. And so we decided at the turn of millennium to consider location information as a part, as an important part of public administration reform in the country. And uh, uh, as the base registries and the only ones principle were also uh, a key message uh, in this public administration reform, we succeeded to uh, formulate that the location data will be maintained uh, in the base registry, which we call RUYAN, the territorial identification addresses and real estate. And uh, so this was, it was the strategy. Then it became uh, a set of laws. And uh, then we built up a cooperation of, uh, on one hand, several uh, center bodies to provide information, uh, including statistics. And uh, so the Czech Office for Spring Pepping and Cadastro, the Ministry of Interior, and uh, others. And uh, this uh, four registries became reality. And uh, to maintain the uh, Ruyan registry, we built up a framework and rules and uh, educative uh, measures to involve uh, the authorized uh, local editors from the villages and from towns and from uh, uh, from uh, how it's called building authorities and statistical authorities. So it's a huge complex of editors supported by technical and legal and organization tools. And at the beginning, it seemed extremely challenging, but at the end, uh, it became successful, although it's not taken as a political success because the long-term story is no, never understood by the following political garniture as a success. So by the practical people, it's taken as a success. And uh, now we are in the second stage where the people recognize it's useful. It's really the only one's principle in practice. And uh, the data are used within the base registries as reference data. So you never need to reintroduce your address or the competence of the uh, regional or uh, geographic competence of a village or of another body because it's there in the system. It's used for elections. It's used for you know, hundreds of public agendas. And uh, now in this new stage, uh, the bodies recognize that it's very good to have their specialized content as a part of the reference set of uh, data geographic data in the territorial register. And so nowadays we have a new wave where the bodies are uh, responsible for nature protection or for uh, mining or for, um, uh, yeah, there are many uh, mm -hmm. of them. 
which contribute with their specialized data to be incorporated and to be used in this reference regime for the future. And uh, so uh, now naturally we have capacities uh, challenge newly, but uh, yeah, the, the model became recognized and used and uh, it's then uh, really wide spreading into the public administration within and also as we publish the data as open data uh, for any user it's uh, the uh, so continuous updating and so everybody knows that uh, it's a fresh source a reliable uh, authoritative data which can be then reused in uh, uh, also private uh, or academic uh, projects so it's uh, the use of <clears throat> content is enormous okay thank you thank you eva very much for sharing this with us i hope that um, uh, you already let's say covered a bit uh, or mostly the what uh, auntie was uh, expecting nevertheless as um, as massimo uh, suggested in his presentation as well you can also use join up for exchange of your opinions between the countries so uh, the link of join up and the lisa collection has been shared already so become a member and try to to use this platform as well there is a last question that we'll take here auntie would you like to post the question by yourself please Yes, thank you, Simon. I was wondering about this um, connection to be general digital maturity results. I, I don't know if you have considered that in 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 some of the um, some of the uh, LIFO questions or setting how this LIFO reflects kind of this kind of maturity of or general maturity of the countries in digitalization uh, or digital economy, and I would like to hear some some reflections on that. Okay, maybe, thank you. Thank you, Auntie, for this question. So I would uh, invite here uh, uh, Ray, maybe to reflect on that. Please, Ray. Uh, yes, um, uh, Simon, and uh, thank you, Auntie, for the question. Um, can you hear me, by the way? Yes. Yeah, good, good. Um, as far as the relationship between LIFO and uh, wider uh, digital maturity goes, um, what we're trying, what we've been trying to do with um, uh, with LIFO, is uh, bridge the gap between the between the two. So we're not a geospatial uh, maturity uh, framework. We're a geo geospatial uh, in the context of uh, digital government. Uh, but we pick out uh, topics that are highly relevant uh, to the use of location information in digital government and uh, to the exploitation of location information uh, in, the, in the economy. So we've designed the, uh, the guidance framework and designed the monitoring mechanism uh, with that in, in mind, we've also tried to reflect the, uh, the coverage within the, uh, within the EIF, which focuses on interoperability. So our focus is on integration, on alignment, on standardization, on collaboration. So it's the various key elements that form uh, an interoperability framework. So with that in mind, there will be some differences between uh, the focus of uh, our framework and the focus of other frameworks, and also how the, the monitoring is approached is, is important uh, as well. And uh, I, I mean, I'm pleased to say that the, the framework that we have, I feel is broad and I feel it's comprehensive. And I feel the contributors have made a very good representation uh, of uh, an honest representation of the state of play in their countries. If we're going to introduce a tool, um, it can be a promotional tool, but it should be a tool which uh, accurately represents the state of play 
and identifies uh, strengths and weaknesses and can be used to plan improvements. I feel we have that. And uh, I don't know Daisy, for example, in, in detail. I know that, uh, and I don't know how the, inf the information capture is approached in, in, in Daisy. That is something that uh, we want to uh, investigate in uh, the next round of LIFO. And uh, coming to the question earlier also on sustainability, we are planning a, uh, a run of the next run of LIFO for 2022. Uh, we, env we hope that uh, all uh, 23 participating countries and more will continue in uh, 2022. Uh, the indicator scheme, which did undergo some revisions uh, between 2019 and uh, 2020, uh, we envisage there will be um, uh, very few revisions for uh, 2022 so that we can get some uh, good understanding on, uh, on, on progress. And in doing that, we, we can also anticipate that the process will be smoother for participants in, in 2022. And we have, will have a good body of evidence to, to show uh, evolution. Uh, over the over the years, so I'm uh, choosing to answer two questions there, and Auntie uh, and uh, Martin. I hope that uh, that gives you some feedback on what you said. Yes, thank you, thank you, Ray, very much for your comprehensive answers. Uh, I have impression that we could have discussed and uh, exchanged the good practices between the countries even more, but unfortunately, we are behind on schedule, so we will need to, to close soon. So there were no other questions. So uh, before we close, I would like to invite you to some, some other event that is uh, coming. And uh, uh, right next uh, Monday, uh, you're invited to next ELISA webinar on emerging approaches for data-driven innovation in Europe. So uh, there is already quite a big interest for this webinar. So you're invited as well uh, to attend. Um, and uh, last but not least, uh, follow us on our, all our channels, as already said, to join the ELISA community collection on join up and subscribe to our ELISA uh, YouTube channel where this uh, webinar was to, uh, today also uh, live streamed. So uh, at the end, thank you, uh, uh, Ray and Massimo for, uh, for the nice presentation. Thank all the participants uh, and also all uh, that uh, commented and uh, shared their views. And see you at the next uh, ELISA webinar on Monday. Good afternoon. <laughs>